Before getting that new cybersecurity certification, ask yourself these three questions. Firstly, I want to start with the fact that nowadays the cybersecurity certification market is just heavily oversaturated. There's so many different organizations coming out with different certifications. Of course, a lot of them are really good and really great value. If you're a beginner starting out in cyber and you already have two or three certifications under your belt, you most likely don't need to get the next one and the next one over and over again, basically just trying to keep up with the trend of new certifications. If you're actually trying to get into cybersecurity, because at some point you're going to find yourself four or five certifications on your resume and no actual technical project experience, no home lab, no cybersecurity project portfolio. And even with all these certs, even if they're good certs, a recruiter or a hiring manager may still hesitate when considering you for a job if you don't have any actual hands-on cybersecurity experience on your resume. And this is the exact spot that a lot of cybersecurity beginners I find get trapped in because you hear everyone saying that you need to get this certification, get that certification. And then when you apply to jobs, there's really not that much on your resume besides a few certifications, which isn't enough information to give to a recruiter for them to determine whether or not you're going to be able to actually pass the cybersecurity interview because that is going to take actual hands-on experience using cybersecurity tools, doing SOC or SOC simulation training, building your own home lab, troubleshooting it, running updates, updating config files, stuff like that all the hands-on stuff that's actually going to get you cybersecurity experience. So the first question to ask yourself, do you really need another cybersecurity certification? Personally, I think if you already have two or three cybersecurity certs on your resume, even better if one of them is the Security Plus, which is a very popular cybersecurity certification for beginners, and then maybe one or two other certifications based on the cybersecurity niche that you're interested in, whether it be GRC, Blue Team, or Red Team. Honestly, that's already enough certifications on your resume. Right now, at this point, you should be focusing on growing your cybersecurity project portfolio and not not on studying for another cybersecurity cert. So sometimes I do think it gets to a point where getting more certifications can do more harm than good because you're not focusing on the right things. You're focusing too much on getting these certifications when you really need to get that experience along with it. The experience is really what's going to set you apart from other candidates who also just have a few certifications and not that much technical cybersecurity experience, which you can only get if you haven't already worked in IT or cyber through your own personal projects. Question number two, is the certification on at least 30% of the job applications that you're applying for? Obviously, most job applications are going to ask for the popular ones like the Security Plus, CISSP, the CISA. I know most of these certifications are not beginner certifications, but you'd be surprised how many of these beginner entry-level cybersecurity jobs are asking for a CISSP and seven years of experience. But that is a whole nother topic I've made plenty of videos about. However, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there are a lot of really good certifications that are becoming super popular, specifically the Hack the Box CPTS certification. This is an ethical hacking certification that a lot of cybersecurity professionals are giving huge praise to on LinkedIn, on Reddit. This is primarily because the certification exam is CTF style, so it's very hands-on with 480 sections and requires you to compromise nearly 300 hosts as you get certified. I personally think this is going to be one of the new certifications that our employers are going to start looking for in their job listings for ethical hackers, red teamers, and pen testers. So I'll link the details for the Hack the Box CPTS certification in my description if you're interested in checking it out. But when you're deciding what certification to go for, the things that you really need to be considering are number one, how relevant it is for the actual job. For example, if it's a blue team certification, how relevant is it actually for an SOC analyst? And then number two, how recognizable is the certification to recruiters and hiring managers? It can take time for the cybersecurity industry to be able to fully recognized to be able to start recognizing newer certifications. But that also means you don't want to get certifications that are already phasing out, which by the way, let me know if you guys are interested in a video on the cybersecurity certifications that are phasing out and their replacements, because I do think that would be an interesting topic that I haven't seen anyone make a video on yet. So let me know in the comments if that would be interesting to you. Is the certification on at least 20% of job applications that you're applying to? So maybe having the certification on 20% of job listings is just, it's just an estimated number, but but if you're actively on the job market, you tend to recognize and remember what certifications employers are looking for, especially based on industry, especially based on niche, location, etc. So just keep an eye on what certifications that recruiters and hiring managers actually want from their candidates. That should be one of the base requirements. But of course, if it's just a certification that teaches foundational cybersecurity and you're interested in learning those basics, then you can definitely go for it. But again, you're not going to need four or five of those on your resume. Two or three is going to be enough. Okay, here's another thing that you should be thinking about if you're trying to break into cybersecurity. And this is, of course, making sure that you yourself don't get hacked. 
Unlike traditional methods of authentication, like a standard password, pass keys are easier to use, more secure, and phishing resistant, meaning hackers can't get their hands on them. But without a password manager, pass keys are typically tied to a single device. So it can only be used on the phone, tablet, or laptop that you made it on. And I'm sure you guys have seen the alert on your phones, on your laptops, from websites asking you to save a pass key instead of a standard password to log in because it is just so much more secure. So how can you use these pass keys on multiple devices? That is where Keeper Security comes in. Keeper allows you to manage your pass keys and traditional passwords for effortless authentication, making it easy to access all of your accounts at any time, anywhere, and most importantly, on any device. Keeper is enterprise grade security for everyone. Right now, you can get 50% off Keeper security using my code with Sandra or at keeper.io slash with Sandra. And you can also try it for free with a 30 day free trial using the link in my description. Thank you to Keeper for sponsoring this portion of the video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. The third question to ask is, does this certification teach you skills through hands-on cybersecurity project? Personally, I do think that a lot of certifications are headed down this path where they're teaching you through building your own projects, creating something from scratch like an SIM or setting up Active Directory or IT infrastructure or even just learning how to use cybersecurity tooling like Nmap, like Wireshark, etc. Basically ways to not only learn the foundational cybersecurity concepts, but also get to practice them hands-on directly in the certification course itself. So you're not just passively learning the material through a screen or a video course, but you're also getting hands-on by using a tool to practice yourself or building something from scratch that you can also put on your resume and also be able to talk about in future interviews. For example, in the future, if you have a cybersecurity interviewer ask you, what is Active Directory? Sure, you can give a definition answer of what it is and how it works. Imagine if you're able to answer that question using the foundational concepts by telling them how you set up your own Active Directory, all the steps that went into it, how you managed the workload, any automations that you made, any troubleshooting that you had to do, roadblocks that you hit along the way and how you fix them. This is the kind of answer I think will really wow an interviewer compared to just saying, yes, I know what Active Directory is and here's the textbook definition as my answer. This is the difference between the average candidate and a really, really good cybersecurity candidate. And if you're currently applying to cybersecurity jobs and haven't had much success with your cybersecurity interviews, I do have a technical cybersecurity interview prep mastery course, and this is going to be for you. If you need help preparing for technical cybersecurity interview questions, security design questions, and of course, behavioral interview questions. This basically takes everything that I do to personally study and prep for my cybersecurity interviews into a course and be much better prepared for your next cybersecurity interviews, especially going into the busy hiring season of January and February, which are two of the biggest hiring seasons for tech in general. I'll have my full technical cybersecurity interview prep mastery course linked in my description below. So when you're looking for a cybersecurity course or certification, always try to see if they have hands-on projects, if they're using hands-on tools, if there's something that they're teaching you in a project base that you can also put on your resume on top of whatever fancy certificate that you get at the end of the course or certification program. Make sure there's some tangible hands-on technical experience that you can also add onto your resume. And nowadays with certification courses getting more and more advanced, a lot of them have these simulation training where you can act like you're already working as an SOC analyst using an SIM. They'll have cybersecurity alerts come in and you'll have to answer them. You'll have to triage them. You'll have to handle incidents. So there's a lot of really realistic cybersecurity training out there now. Of course, I'll also link a few in my description if you're interested in checking it out. I've also made previous videos on cybersecurity certifications for beginners, so you can always watch those. But one last thing I want you guys to consider is if there are any renewal fees or annual upkeep that you have to do to keep your certification. This is primarily for certifications that require more experience, like the CISSP, where you'll need continuing education credits or some kind of continuing education to be able to keep your certification on top of any annual or biannual or triannual cybersecurity certification fees that you'll have to be paying. This typically means going to conferences, going to different trainings, just to keep your certifications active. Now, I know a lot of beginner cybersecurity certs don't have these, but they typically do have renewal fees. For example, I believe the Security Plus, it renews every three years and the price keeps going up. So I renewed my Security Plus certification, I believe a year or two ago. I think it cost me around $200 around there, maybe a little bit less, but if you have three or four certifications that require you to have, you know, pay hundreds of dollars every few years to keep those certifications, eventually you're not going to keep renewing them if they're no longer serving you. So get certifications that you know are going to be relevant in a few years, which is why I brought that up in the beginning of this video, because if you're gonna be paying renewal fees, for example, even the ISC2 CC certified in cybersecurity certification, and we didn't know ISC2 is also the creator of the CISSP cert, the CC cert is actually their beginner level cert, and they gave away, I believe, 1 million free CC certification exam vouchers and training 
for beginners to get started. But even though they gave away free vouchers, I believe there's still a renewal fee, which is $50 or an activation fee. You basically have to pay a fee to be able to keep the certification and actually have it active. So just something to keep in mind. Even certifications are basically subscription-based nowadays. Even if you pass the first time, you're probably still going to have to pay some kind of renewal fee to keep it active, which kind of sucks, but yeah, that's all I have to say. It just kind of sucks. <laughs> and if you're interested in getting into cyber through a cybersecurity bootcamp, I'd recommend checking out the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp that has a job guarantee if you qualify. It prepares you for the CompTIA Security Plus and teaches you cybersecurity foundational concepts through project-based training. And they also have one-on-one -on -one career mentorship. The program is also completely online and the job guarantee basically works as if you qualify and complete all the requirements and don't get a job within a certain amount of time of graduating the bootcamp, then you get your full tuition refunded. And you can also get $1,000 off the entire bootcamp Bootcamp using the link in my description to see if you qualify for their get a job or get your money back guarantee. And I did recently do an interview with one of their graduates who went from a teacher to a cybersecurity specialist by just completing this one bootcamp. I'll also link that interview in my description. It's always really interesting to hear how people get into cybersecurity. There's so many different ways. Some people are self-taught. Some people get in through a college degree. Some people get in through a bootcamp. It's never going to be a one size fits all. And it's really about finding what works best for you. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful and gave you some insight and frameworks to think about before just jumping into the next cybersecurity certification, especially if you already have enough and could get better outcomes with focusing and prioritizing your efforts in a different space. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Also, don't forget to stay connected on LinkedIn, on Discord, on Instagram. All those are also linked in my description. I share a lot more real-time resources on LinkedIn and Instagram specifically, so be sure to follow me on there for daily updates. Let me know what skills you're interested in learning this new year. I would love to read them in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!